Ashley Ritchie from Sunderland has always loved dance and so for her it was the most natural natural thing in the world that she would find classes to go along to. But Ashley has cerebral palsy and uses a wheelchair to get around and not everyone has made it easy for her. But she's not someone who gives up easily and now she's on the verge of becoming a dance teacher herself. I went along to meet her in her home in Sunderland and I also met Leslie Rennick who's helping her put together a bid for funding to the Arts Council. Well Ashley started by telling me about the first time she went along to a dance class. From the age of being about 13 I was drama trained and wanted to do a little bit of dancing. When I went to college to actually join the dance class they looked at me like I'd fallen out of the sky basically. I'm 37 now and it was back when I was 16 and so it was a long time ago and they were like you want to come and dance? I was like yes and they they accepted that I wanted to dance but I had to um, dance with disabled people and when I said no they actually refused for me to go in the class. I actually went and tried to teach drama and I was actually told I was a fire hazard and could I leave. So both times that I tried to be in in the performing arts field, if you like, I'd been refused. So I actually went and tried something else. For 10 years I was a sound therapist in two special schools, but then I went and retrained in equality because I felt like it it was needed. And when I got a job at Percy Headley Foundation, I actually um, wrote a personal independence programme for them and one of the service users wanted to get involved in dance. And I actually went to Dance City and when I was telling them about the field that I wanted to be in, they actually employed me as a dancer in a few events and then I did some training around equality for them. You said there that you were told you were a fire hazard at one point. When when people say things like that to you and when people say, well, no, you can't dance this way or you can't do this, how does that make you feel? When I was 16, I honestly believed that I would never be employed again. I thought that everybody would think that of me. But actually, when I went into the, the dance class and they said no, I actually thought, I'll show you. Mm. Something doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And actually... Being disabled, you've got to have a thick skin and get up and do it again. Have you always been in a wheelchair then? Um, No, I can still walk a little bit, but for safety purposes, when I'm at work, I'm, I must use a wheelchair. So you managed to get back into dancing. Like you say, you know, people say no to you kind of doesn't... It, it makes you even more determined, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And the field's not easy for anybody, so I'm not going to lie. I always knew that it would be difficult for me. The drama side of it, the presenting side of it, people said they won't, you won't get a job unless somebody wants to employ a disabled person, and that's an absolute fact. So you managed to get back into dancing. So you mentioned, was that through, that was through Dance, Dance City. City? Yeah, Dance City um, employed me to do a couple of festivals in Sunderland and then um, obviously I got Creative Summer where you actually choreograph your own dance piece. That was a message not quite received, I called that, <laughs> and it was ra- around equality yeah. and diversity in dance. You actually have to find funding to go around and, and present that to people. So, well, Leslie, tell me a little bit more about this then. Right, so as you can see, Ashley is brimful of ideas. She's a very, very creative person. Um, The message not quite received dance that she she worked on and with an able-bodied choreographer from Dance City and they they designed this piece in terms of cerebral palsy the 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 problem is that you want your body to do something but your brain doesn't quite receive the message Uh, and there was a lot of very very good feedback around that and where we're at now with Ashley is um, is turning that into an education piece Mm -hmm. to take into schools because partly of the experience that Ashley's had herself but also it's it's really a training program to help teachers to help disabled children to understand that they're not made of glass but it's about they move differently um, so Ashley has taken this this message not quite received piece and turning it all into a whole education program um, that we're looking for funding for. I'm right. I'm helping write the bids for the funding, and then we're going to take it into as many schools as we possibly can for able and disabled children. 
So that's Leslie there who is helping put together this bid for funding for and with Ashley Ritchie from Sunderland who just wants to dance. She wants to be a dance. She wants to be a dance teacher. And, and we've hear been hearing this morning from Ashley Ritchie. She's from Sunderland. She loves dance. She loves performing and isn't going to let the fact that she uses a wheelchair and has cerebral palsy get in the way. One of the things she's done is to create a dance performance called Message Not Quite Received with the help of Holly Irving from Dance City in Newcastle. People need to learn that they need to embrace diversity. Diversity isn't scary, everybody's different and it doesn't matter whether you're able-bodied or you're disabled, everybody has something that they're not very good at and everybody has talents and it's about when you're disabled people don't often look at the talent, they look at kind of the wheelchair and the wheelchair is not what makes me disabled. When I sit in the wheelchair it makes me more independent than anybody else. The wheelchair is the tool that makes me the most independent. It makes me be able to dance. But also, a message not quite received, I did something really unique. I actually got out of the wheelchair and started to dance. Now, Holly um, had to be very brave and just go with it because it's scary that, because nobody had ever done that before. Tell me if you can, what or how you feel when you're dancing how does it make you feel you can be anybody you want to be when you dance that's why i went into the creative field because people actually are there because they want to see what you can do and actually i've performed live so many times and people have pirouetted on the back of my chair and you can actually hear people you can hear a pin drop and you can hear people gasp with breath and you just think i've actually um, broke down so many barriers so far and I hope that I carry on breaking them down because there's still so many barriers that need to be broken down because actually people can achieve in this field but years ago it was a big no-no people mm. were scared of it I, th- I think people are still frightened of it but people are open-minded a lot more open-minded than they were before but, you know, we mentioned before how important it is to let young people, particularly young people who may be disabled and think, I can't do that, know that they really can. Yeah, they can. They can do that. And I don't believe that there's just me in the North East that actually wants to get up and dance. I don't believe that. I, I think people are frightened of people saying no. And I think they'd rather just stay in the house and even though they dream about that, they think it is just a dream, but you can actually do whatever you want to do as long as you believe that you can do it, you can. And people actually want to give people the chance to do that. Yeah. And, and like you say, you know, you were turned away from places and there are still people now who are being turned away from dance classes and drama classes because of a disability, aren't they? Oh, of course they are, because it's a hard, like I've said before, it's a hard field to be in. And like I was told, unless they're looking for a disabled person, a disabled presenter, a disabled um, actress, a disabled dancer, you won't get the job. Mm. But in actual fact, the day that I don't become an inspiration to people will be the day that I've cracked society because I should just be seen for the talent not for the fact that I'm in a chair you know Mm -hmm. I've got a voice just like you so why can't I go out and interview people why why can't I get a job on tv and the day that tv break it and make it acceptable will society will follow that Mm -hmm. I reckon I think she's quite right. Very determined. Ashley Ritchie from Sunderland there. We have been hearing this morning from the lovely Ashley Ritchie from Sunderland who loves dance and performing arts. But as a teenager, she was told she couldn't join in because she has cerebral palsy and uses a wheelchair, which would make her a fire hazard. She, I know it's unbelievable she was actually told that. But she's persevered and is now working with Dance City in Newcastle and is submitting a bid to the Arts Council to get funding for her own dance programme she can take into schools. She says there are so many more opportunities for people like herself than before, but there's still lots of work to be done. There is a long way to go and they're doing very well. I think once one person does it, you'll, it's like a domino effect, isn't it? They'll all want to do it. But I, I, I just think... You know, you doing this um, programme will make people sit up and think. And I, I hope that does actually happen. And obviously, Leslie, you're trying to get a bit of funding from the Arts Council. Um, it, how easy is it to get funding? It's not easy at all. The whole point, when you write, not just the Arts Council in fairness, but when you're writing funding bids, 
you have to have an awful lot of stamina just to get through all the questions, mm -hmm. just to get through all of the research that they want, um, to hit the to hit the buttons. Because at any time, even when you do all of that and you've written the best possible bid you can, they can turn around and say, well, it's all very nice, thank you very much, but it's not quite what we want at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do, and of course the other thing is, especially with the Arts can Council, is it, we need to match fund because they, they can't, they're not allowed to 100% fund any project. Um, so we're applying for different funding streams so that we've got the whole project fully funded so that the schools don't have to pay, but that we can get, you know, it's, it's, it's things like transport for Ashley, it's the costumes, it's other dancers, it's musicians. Um, so what we're trying to do, it's about sustainability for artists, not just like Ashley, but for all artists. And that's, that's what we're trying to do really with this funding bid. And it's about breaking the barriers between yeah. able-bodied dancers and disabled dancers um, and just getting them to work together as just a normal thing. Mm. You obviously, you know, know Ashley and you've heard what she said, you know her story. How important do you think it is to get Ashley's dance turned into an educational programme and taken out there? I think it's absolutely vital. In another life, I was a career, my career was as a teacher. Um, and so I understand where Ashley's coming from. I also understand where the teachers are coming from. Um, and when people say things like, um, you're a fire hazard, it's it's horrific. It's absolutely horrific, and it shouldn't even shouldn't even cross anyone's mind. Never mind come out of their mouth. But what we've got to do is the, the, the we've got to help the teachers. We've got to facilitate the teachers and break the barriers down for them because teachers worry about things like I'm not allowed to touch children anymore, um, and that's not actually true. It's about finding out what is able and what is what is possible um, while we're keeping the children safe. But while we're keeping the children safe, don't hem them in. Don't let their disabilities define them. Knock all these barriers down mm -hmm. and let everybody just grow wings and fly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Ashley's trying to do. It's brilliant. It's inspirational, Ashley. And I think um, your attitude is just phenomenal. It really is. Because a lot of people, disabled or not, would probably, you know, hear some of the things that you've heard in, in your life and just go all right then I'll, I'll just not bother but obviously you feel so passionate that this should be completely accessible to everyone don't you yes i do and the dancers that i've worked with that are able they get so much out of dancing with me and when i first started dancing with them i used to think really but they actually do and they've actually learned a lot from dancing with me just to train them i used to say to them right you're a dancer but what happens if you couldn't use your left hand side you've got to dance for me now and it's the simplest thing and it's the most powerful thing but when when i'm saying right you've got to cut off on one side of your body because there's some people that can only actually use the left hand side they're like oh my god i never realized what that felt like it's harder but it's the simplest way of me being able to put them in my shoes, you know, kind of walk through what it's like for me just in day-to-day -day life because they already understand what it's like to feel because it's not an easy field anyway, mm. you know. So to add that onto, the, onto that as well is really difficult. One thing I wanted to ask you about, I don't know, do you watch Britain's Got Talent, Ashley? I do watch Britain's Got Talent. There was a young girl who had been injured in the Manchester bomb attack. Yeah. And there was some wheelchair dancing there, wasn't there? There was. And it's amazing to see how she's progressed through the need to get up and dance. That just proves it, doesn't it? You know, it, that, was, that was part of her rehabilitation, if you like. She needed to get up with her friends and dance, and that's important. It's a breakthrough. But should it have taken as long? No. It, there needs to be more of that and it needs to be less of the wow factor and yeah. more normality. That's what, And that's what I hope somebody like me can achieve. I, you know, it's still phenomenal what they've achieved, but they still are the wow factor. And, and I'm not foolish enough to think that I'm not the wow factor at the moment, but I need to wipe that out because I should just be as talented as you are, really. You're more talented. I'll tell you now, you're more talented than me, Ashley. Lovely to talk to you. Thank Lovely you so to much. Meet you. Thank you very much. Dancer Ashley Ritchie from Sunderland hoping to take her dance programme into schools. And actually a text in from Alan Jones who just pointed out that uh, No Voice Guy Lee was also on Britain's Got Talent at the weekend and he was absolutely brilliant as well. And Ashley, I think, went to school with Lee at one point. So uh, a link there as well. Brilliant.